Stanley, thanks for uh, joining me today. I uh, really appreciate it. Let me ask you, what made you decide to become a lawyer? Part of it comes from uh, my mother was involved with the NAACP in the 50s. Uh, she, went, she was involved throughout the 60s. She wrote programs for schools. And uh, part of it was a undercurrent in our house. Uh, my, gr my grandmother's uh, family was lost in the Holocaust. She was the only survivor of her immediate family. Um, and then uh, there was a great uncle that was a union or worked for unions in the 1920s and was asked to leave Schenectady, New York because of his uh, involvement. It wasn't healthy for him to stay in Schenectady. So some of it comes from that. Some of it comes from the, uh, the civil rights movement of the 60s. Um, and so it's a combination of, of, of lots of things. And just who is Stanley Schneider? How would your friends and family describe you? Lawyer comes first. Uh, father, husband. Uh, you put those adjectives to, to me. But the lawyer comes first, usually. What would your clients say about you? People come to me because they need someone who really is going to fight for them. Someone who's going to be innovative, creative. Uh, a uh, reporter the other day was working, uh, called me and said, I, I went to the Fifth Circuit website and saw and looking to see who the lawyers were on a case. And he saw my name. He said, why was I not surprised to find, my, find me involved in, in an issue that's new and innovative? Now, you're a criminal defense lawyer. Right. How do you help your clients deal with the stress that they must endure throughout a case? Sometimes just talking to them. Uh, the hardest part is uh, many clients are very needy. They need to be talked to. Some people, the families are very needy and they need to be talked to. Uh, I'm not very good at often at hand holding, but I try to be there to make them understand what's going on. I have to understand who they are in order to tell their story. Because all a lawyer is is a storyteller. Whether it's a uh, a civil lawyer representing a big company, he's a story to tell. What's a memorable story from one of your cases that uh, you could tell? Most of the stories I can't tell. <laughs> uh, I want to hear that one. Because <laughs> there's always a backstory. There's always a story of, uh, of what didn't get, get, uh, get into the print of the uh, law books or get into uh, the courtroom. Uh, one memory would be uh, Sammy Norman English. Uh, Sammy was on death row. He was going to be executed on a Thursday. Uh, I got a phone call uh, from Judge Joe Keegan's, who was one of my mentors, and I walked into her courtroom. She had a jury in the box. She stopped. She got off the bench. She said, you're J Sammy's uh, lawyer. Stop the execution. Figure out how to do it. This was Monday afternoon. He was scheduled to die on Thursday. Uh, Sammy's death sentence was commuted to oh, three years later uh, after I reversed his conviction. Mm. How'd that make you feel? In death penalty work, you have two different emotions. You have the emotion of getting someone off the row. Uh, for example, Ricardo Adapi Guerra. Uh, he was a Mexican national that I worked with Scott Atlas uh, when, he was, when Scott was at Vincent Elkins. And we proved that Ricardo was innocent. And he, we got him released from jail. He got he was deported back to Mexico. Uh, you know that the you're, you're uh, exhilarated that the system worked and you were able to affect change. And then when you're doing death penalty work, you have people like uh, Joe Cannon. Joe was executed in '98. He was 17 at the time he committed the crime for which uh, he ended up on death row and he was executed. Today. 17-year-olds can't be tried for capital murder and can't be executed. Uh, we, I started litigating the 17-year-old issue with his case, and four years later, the Supreme Court changed the rules. Uh, so he influenced the change, and his case influenced the change in the law, but still, Joe was executed. So you have those type of stories and those type of memories of going to death row going to the death chamber and on the afternoon of the execution. Well, I could see the, the passion inside of you for the law. What, what else are you passionate about? 
I, I, one thing I miss a great deal is the coaching of ch my kids. Uh, it, uh, when my, my daughter played volleyball and they needed a uh, coach in this for, uh, uh, at the JCC, Jewish Community Center. So they uh, drafted me to be a volleyball coach. And I watched, watched her play and gone to her practices, so I became a volleyball coach. And at the same time, I was coaching, helping coach my son's little league teams and basketball teams. And, and that was uh, a lot of fun hanging out with the kids. And uh, now, they uh, now they take me in, uh, out with them as long as I pick up the tab. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and that's, uh, I'm very involved with the Texas Criminal Defense Lawyers Association. I'm president right now. Uh, we spend a lot of time training lawyers. Uh, and uh, I've been married now for 30, 34 years, so my wife tolerates me. And so it, that's, uh, takes up a, a lot of time. What is your best legal moment? There's been many. Um, there, you measure your victories in different, in different ways. Um, there's a man named Charles Forche. He was charged with murdering a two-year-old. He was a foster parent. Having a jury acquit him, he was just such a wonder. He is such a wonderful man. Uh, there have been many victories. Uh, El Dapi Guerra, getting him out of jail, uh, reversing uh, Victor Saldano's conviction uh, in the Supreme Court, um, the acquittal in Bob Angleton's case. Uh, was huge. Uh, winning his extradition case in the Netherlands was huge. Uh, Claude Wilkerson, he was on death row and uh, reversing his conviction and suppressing all the evidence. That was huge. Uh, it, 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 the list goes on and on. Tell me why I need to hire you. Uh, if you want a lawyer that, that, will, that reads the law, understands the law, and applies the law, uh, a very good example is the work that uh, Buck Biles and I are doing right now on the issue of restitution and child pornography cases. It's one of the biggest issues in the country today where people who, young ch children whose pictures were taken and their p images are being sent around the world as victims of child pornography are now suing uh, the men who are looking at those pictures today. And they're trying to get uh, money judgments against them for restitution for the damages that they suffered. Uh, we've uh, been successful in the first case in the federal appellate courts that said you have to show approximate cause between their damages and the conduct of the individual. And just because someone looks at an image on a computer does not mean they have to pay damages. And we won that, just won that case in the Fifth Circuit, and it's the first of its kind in the country. Uh, you know, it's extremely satisfying, and that's, in a, and there's been uh, judgments all across the country where lawyers didn't do, didn't fight the issue, just accepted the fact that they're going to get it, and uh, I sh cr created a way to fight, and we've been successful, uh, working with Buck Files up in Tyler, Texas. Uh, We've worked together on this, and we've been able to uh, be very, very successful with it. I bring that kind of innovative, uh, it's an innovative difference. That's why other lawyers bring me in on cases. So as a, a lawyer, as a father, as a husband, how do you want to be remembered in each of those areas? As a lawyer, uh, someone who's been dedicated to the craft, I want my fa kids to think that I'm involved, that I've been there. Uh, I, want, I, I tell them that when they're old, older and they're on the psychiatrist's couch, I want them to complain that their dad was always around, hovering in, with them. Uh, my wife, you know, she's, she's been a partner in, uh, in the journey that I've been on as a lawyer. I think she would like me to be less lawyer and more person, but uh, the law has set me free to be the person I am and the, has been the vehicle for me to develop as a person. So I, I guess I'm a lawyer first and everything else second. <laughs>